Are you getting ready? Are you getting ready? The scripture says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And my question to you, are you getting ready? Are you getting ready to worship? Are you getting ready to be in heaven and to worship God in spirit and in truth? We read here in Revelation chapter 4 and verse 10, For the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Now, when we come to Jesus initially, we still have a fallen nature. There's still a old man that needs to be crucified, that needs to be uh, denied. Um, and I'll assure you of this, that old man of sin does not want to worship God. And I'll go a step further. Your flesh does not want to serve God. Your human body does not want to worship God because of the curse of sin that's upon our bodies. And that's why the scripture says that this corruptible shall put on incorruption, that life is going to swallow up, death will be swallowed up in life, victory. Um, but ever since the fall, there is such opposition against the Creator. And the devil tries to come and get us to not fully surrender, to fully submit, to fully appreciate, to fully appreciate and value who our creator is. He is our God. He is our creator. And when you understand that he's your creator and that he's God, you will have no problem coming into full submission to him. The problem is, is that we are taught not only from the devil deceiving, trying to deceive us, but we're taught in society and there's such negative in society against God. And so the Bible says we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. Well, we've got to come into an understanding, folks, of who God is, okay, and what he deserves. I like what David says in the Psalms. He says, Oh, that men would give God the glory that do his name. Oh, that men would give God the glory that do his name. Do you understand that it is a privilege to worship God? It's a privilege. It's not a drudgery. If it's a drudgery to, to worship God, then you don't know him. It should not be a drudgery. It should be the highest honor. It should be the highest. Our praise should be the highest praises. Our worship should be the, the greatest worship. Uh, this should be exuberance. It should be out of our belly flowing rivers of living water, giving God all the glory, giving him all. The Bible says that the sound of many waters, out of God's voice, the sound of many waters. Can you imagine that? When God speaks, it's, the, it's like many waters. That's power, folks. That's power. And who is man that that... that that God is mindful of him, right? Who is man that God is mindful of him? Who is man that, that we can worship God? Who is man that we can even be called by his name? Just, I just don't understand how man can be so arrogant 
towards their creator. Even if they don't accept God and, and submit to God and, and be submitted to him, God is still their creator. They'll spend eternity lost in hell and in the lake of fire and God is still their creator. That, that is just, that boggles my mind. These people were created by God and they're going to spend eternity separated from him. That's crazy. They don't want to believe that he's their creator. That doesn't change the fact that he is their creator. That doesn't change the fact. God is still the creator, amen, of heaven and earth. Listen to what it says here. Praise God. For thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are created and were created. They exist. Everything that's been created by God was for his glory, for his pleasure. And who are you to say that God the creator can't do what he wants to do? Who are you? Think about it. Who are you to say to the creator, I'm not going to believe in you? You'll pay a price for that. Do you realize that he's the only one that can save you? He's the only one that can deliver you. He's the only one that can protect you from himself, from the devil, from any harm. God is the only one that can save you. He's the only one that can deliver you. He's the only one that can protect you. And it's amazing to me how people reject the very one, the only one that can save them the only one that can deliver them, the only one that can help them, and they reject him. Amazing. Now I understand, I understand that there's the work of the devil and the, the Bible says the God of this world has blinded their minds so that they can't believe and the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ cannot shine unto them. I understand that. But when you look around and you see hopelessness and you see society crumbling around you and you think in your mind, I'm my own God, or you think that uh, you, there's no life after this life, you just die and that's it, it comes to an end. That's so hopeless. And then you can look at someone like myself or someone that's saved, born again, redeemed of the Lord, a saint of God, and, and look at the joy on our countenance and the happiness and what we have in the Lord and say, ah. You can look at the light shining, emanating out of my life and say, ah. That's nothing. It's not real. And yet what you believe is real. <laughs> you believe in what you believe in and there's no creator you don't believe in a creator you, you believe that everything just came out of a big bang and that's <laughs> dear God well there was a big bang and God's the one that pulled the trigger hallelujah hallelujah <laughs>